Hi fans and welcome to the 30th season of Woodland Hills High School football and we also welcome you to the 2016 week one edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. The Wolverines open up the 2016 season at Gateway. We're going to sit down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak to talk about the opening game against the Gators. We'll also take a look back to last season as well as what went on in the offseason. All of that and more on the pregame show here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Underway in Fox Chapel, PA, a high hanging kick that'll be returned by an up man from the 25 yard line. And the Vikings off to the races. Uh oh, this could be trouble. Ronald George down the near boundary, and he will return the opening kickoff for a touchdown. A high kick to the short return man, and he takes it back 75 yards for the TD. He'll hand off. Tailback running to the left hand side is Ronnie Jones, and he will be swallowed up in the backfield. Now Fisher's going to run to the near side. He'll sidestep a Wolverine for the moment, but Damon Johnson's there to meet him and bring him down. Cleaning up the play was Joel Jean. Fisher, low snap. He'll look right. He's pressured. He wrapped. He's sacked. Coming in on the blitz was Saeed Holtz. And Fisher brought down at the 32-yard line. Miles, he's going to keep it himself. He's spinning his way inside of the 40, the 35, the 30, across the 25, and Woodland Hills with a first down. Miles, the quarterback. He'll hand off to Shaw, who runs right. He's got the first down and more inside of the 10-yard line. As Miles is going to run, he's hit as he was going to run and end around, and the ball is loose on the carpet. It's still loose. And does Central Catholic get it or not? It will be Vikings football. Quarterback. Fisher running right, directing traffic, thumping it off short. And Central Catholic has the first down. And it's a fake, and they will hand off as DeMar Hamlin runs from left to right. He's got the first down and more down the far sideline. He'll be forced out of bounds. This will be a 35-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold, and that kick will just clear the crossbar. And and the handoff, no, Miles Sanders is going to keep it, bouncing it to the near side, 25 to the 30, he's out of bounds to the near boundary, across the 32, around the 31-yard line. And the Wolverines going to run the fake, straight up the middle, Miles Sanders, first down and more, spinning inside of Vikings territory, now he'll cut it back, 40, 35, still on his feet, 30, what a monstrous block at the 30, Miles still on his feet, he will take it into the end zone for a touchdown. It's Touchdown's going to come back, but it'll still be a Woodland Hills first down. Cooper, looking left the whole way. Intended for Jamon Dunn, and it's intercepted by the Vikings. Running with the football is Ronnie Jones. Jones down the far sideline, picks up a block. Stephen Puel was being held, but Ronnie Jones is still off to the races, and he'll carry it all the way into the end zone for a Central Catholic touchdown. And a pick six for the Vikings, and the Wolverines down 16 to nothing. The snap is fumbled, and it's on the floor. The Wolverines scoop it up. Into the end zone goes a Woodland Hills defender. Who is it? Dana Wilson Adams. It's Dana Wilson Adams with the fumble return for a touchdown, and the Wolverines are in business with 5:20 to play. Fisher is going to hand off to Emmanuel. He's got a crease. He's got the first down. He's off to the races. 30, 25, 20 inside of the 15, and he'll be spun out of bounds along the far sideline. Emmanuel will take the carry. He's inside of the five, and he will cross the goal line for a Central Catholic touchdown. We are the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Since 1987, we've been a part of some of the most electrifying football games in Western Pennsylvania, and we've established a national reputation of excellence. Whether you're a former player, a Woody High alum, a parent, or a fan, you're part of our Wolverine family. And now you can join us by becoming a part of our new booster club, the Wolverine Nation. Visit whfba.org and see how your donation can help our student athletes while earning you unique benefits. We're more than just a booster club. We are the Wolverine Nation. 
Hi again fans and welcome back to this 2016 week one edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. Adam Guskey here sitting down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak and coach Novak before we talk about this season or the uh, game against Gateway. Let's take a look back to last year. Great season ended up with a little bit of a disappointment against Central Catholic but still undefeated through the regular season and a conference championship. Yeah I, you know we had a really good team last year it was experienced we had 32 seniors uh, ended up 11 and 1. Uh, we lost to Central, eventually won the state title, the WPO and the state title. And, uh, you know, we played really well against them. Just they had a couple big plays which kind of turned the game in their favor. But uh, you know, I was proud of our kids and the effort. And, you know, they all had a great career here the last four years, some of them, uh, and the last three for most of them. But, you know, the seniors graduated, had a great, uh, great four years here, three or four years here. Coach, let's talk specifically about some of those seniors. Obviously, Miles Sanders headed off to Penn State and Joel Shaw headed off to Syracuse. They had big off seasons, but uh, there's a number of other young men that are headed off to colleges, plus the big 33 game. Yeah, I'm real uh, proud of the guys and their efforts here at Woodland Hills. And, you know, most of them are going on to college next year. And Miles and Joel and Terrell Gray and uh, Wolford Clark all played in the big 33 game, which was exciting. And Miles was the MVP. And, he scored three touchdowns and Joel scored a touchdown. So, you know, we're excited about them. And we had several guys playing the East-West game, Tyreek Thompson and, and Jay Mon Dunn. And uh, Steve Pugh was selected for that. And, you know, they did real well in the game. Uh, Jay Mon scored a touchdown. So I was real proud of the kids. And uh, they're, they're all off to college. And a lot of them Division One schools, Division Two. Some of them were going to junior colleges. But, you know, most of them went on to college. So. Real proud of them. Coach, let's talk about the transition. No longer uh, Quad A school, but now 5A with uh, the bigger schools from Quad A headed up to 6A, Woodland Hills, Upper St. Clair, and a handful of others staying at the 5A level. Yeah, I think, you know, when, when you talk about it, going to the whole 6A, going to six classifications, uh, a lot of people feel that there was a split between the stronger teams in Quad A. Half of them are up at in the 6A and half of them are in the 5A, which, you know, and a couple of the strong AAA schools are up in the, the 5A classification also, so they're growing. But, uh, you know, 5A is going to be very strong, very tough. Uh, you know, some of our old rivalries were getting back into play, and unfortunately we lost a couple. Uh, we lost Penn Hills, which is a big rivalry. Coach, let's talk about the off-season training program. How did that go, obviously, with so many seniors to replace? That had to be a huge focus. Yeah, we spent a lot of time with the, uh, the players this year in the off-season in the weight room doing conditioning. Coach Damico did a great job. Uh, the majority of the boys were committed, bought into the program. This summer we had a great, uh, great summer doing special things, going to 7-on-7 uh, seven -seven camps and competing and making the team better each individual trying to improve each kid. A lot of them went to other camps and colleges on their own, did a good job. Talk about the philosophy of only doing one scrimmage as opposed to seasons past. Uh, last year when we made that decision, we knew we graduated a lot of players and we wanted to have a game under our belt before we went into a conference game. So that was the main thrust behind, we didn't want their first because we knew a lot of guys weren't were back when they had two full-time starters back. They started the whole year, and we knew that they'd be nervous in their first game. So we ended up getting in a game, which we had the option of having a second scrimmage or a game. We took the game, and uh, you know, can't second guess yourself. We're playing Gateway. You know, they have an outstanding program, new coach, Coach Hall. So. Uh, be a good competition for us. How did the scrimmage go against Butler? The scrimmage against Butler, uh, we played a lot of guys, had a lot of experience. I thought uh, defensively we did pretty well. We had a couple of things we did wrong in the secondary, but for the most part, defense did pretty well. Uh, offensively, we were able to run the football. Uh, we did a nice job running. We got to improve on the passing game. We got to work hard on it this week because we want that to be more and more part of our uh, our game, the passing game, depending on who we play and how they play us, but we got to be able to throw the football. And, you know, did a couple good things, but we got to get better at it. 
Coach, talk about the challenges going into this season, replacing 11 starters on offense and nine on defense. Uh, it's never happened before at Woodland Hills. We've never had that many guys to replace in a season. Of course, the guys that they're, they were behind were very, very good players. A lot of them played for four years, three year starters. So from that aspect, there were a lot of guys. Uh, and these guys got some experience by getting in games. But, you know, the other part is they're hungry to get in there and show what they could do. So uh, we got a good group of seniors. I'm um, real excited about them, see what they can do on Friday nights. We've got some uh, nice group of uh, juniors. A lot of them are going to be playing. A couple of sophomores show some real potential. And we've got a nice uh, freshman class. A couple of them might even see some playing time on varsity. Coach, before we talk specifically about the Gateway Gators, let's talk about the rivalry against Gateway. First of all, obviously, it goes all the way back to 30 years ago uh, when your team upset Gateway here at the Wolverina. But um, do these young men know what it's like to play against Gateway? It it's certainly has a different feel to it than a lot of the other non-conference games have over the years. Yeah, anybody, I think, that we border, because when you border somebody, Usually there's a lot of family members in both districts. Uh, a lot of guys grew up together. Uh, one, one may have moved one way or the other way. Uh, you know, Penn Hills, Gateway, and McKeesport, you know, they're the three teams that border us. So anytime we play them in, in any sport, it's, it's a rivalry type of game. Now let's talk specifically about the Gators. What are we gonna see from Gateway? Well, they have a new coach, Don Hall, very experienced. He coached at Seneca Valley, uh, does an outstanding job. Uh, actually, I wrote him a letter of recommendation for the job. I thought, you know, it'd be an outstanding job, not knowing that we would open up with him the first game. But, uh, you know, and uh, he's got some, uh, a young staff. He got a lot of guys that play the gateway to come back and be on his staff. And, uh, you know, that gives them some tradition and uh, a lot of them were on very successful teams. A lot of them played in college, a couple in the pros. So he has a very good staff, young, energetic. They got more players out. Uh, they want to rebuild the program. And, you know, he's the man I think can do it for them. Well, coach, how do you feel you're going to match up against the Gators? Well, it's really a, a big uncertainty because, you know, I know coach Hall, he knows what we do. I knew what he did up at Seneca Valley. We actually looked at some of that tape and uh, we each had one scrimmage so you got to see what the other coach wanted to do in the first scrimmage offensively and defensively and it's always a guessing game especially in the first scrimmage. One thing you did notice in their scrimmage uh, you know they have a lot of skilled athletes a lot of speed I think they match up with us pretty well uh, at the skilled positions and I think uh, you know, it's going to come down to the line play offensively and defensively. It'll be a big part of it in the linebackers. And uh, Coach Hall thinks he has some very talented uh, athletic af athletes at linebacker. They run 3-4 defense, and uh, they, uh, they're pretty, pretty quick at the linebacker spots. Uh, they're, you know, got some experience back on the O-line. So... It'll be interesting. I'm, I'm real happy with our progress with the offensive line being that everybody was new last year or this year coming in that, you know, in the scrimmage, they all, they all got better. You could see they were progressing. You know, the first couple games is where you make your biggest strides, but I was real pleased with the offense and defensive line in our first scrimmage. So that'll be the tell of the tell probably. The skilled kids, I, you know, pretty evenly matched speed-wise and that, and we'll see we get into the game, the competitiveness, and uh, I'm sure we'll both be fired up. I know Gateway had a, a clock in their locker room all year for the Woodland Hills game, so it's here, so our clock started, started today. <laughs> well, Coach, we've talked about former Wolverines that have moved on to college. Let's talk about some of the guys in the offseason that have moved from the college to the NFL. Well, uh, you know, the biggest one is uh, Quentin Jefferson. You know, he got drafted and he's up at Seattle doing very well. Uh, 
you know, his family hasn't moved out yet. They're going to do it after the season, I think. But he's he's excited to be up there and uh, stop back a couple times this summer. Got to see him. Uh, you know, he has a beautiful family and his parents. Uh, you know, they're going to be more excited for him. And uh, you know, he likes Seattle. He's competing. You know, should be uh, in the mix there this year, playing time and everything. Uh, Lafayette's down in Miami, doing a good job down there. And uh, KK, the Steelers picked him up, put him on uh, the roster for last week's game. He got on a little bit, so, you know, it's, it's really nice to see those guys go on. Also, there were some guys that made some moves in the NFL as well. Uh, yes, uh, Darren Walls is now with the Lions playing corner. He and his parents stopped down to practice the other day. It was, it was good to see him. He looks great. And uh, he got to play against the Steelers, so it was kind of nice. And, of course, Rontez Miles still with the New York yeah, Jets. Yeah, with the Jets. And uh, Gronkowski's with the Patriots. And uh, not sure what's going to happen with uh, Ryan coming off his injury with the uh, Bears. Coach Novak, thanks a lot for your time. Good luck this week against the Gators, and we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Adam. Looking forward to an exciting year. We'll be back with more of the pregame show right after this here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Let's take a look at the Wolverines' results and remaining schedule. And now the MSA Sports WPIAL 5A Top 10 Ranking. Again, fans, we thank you for joining us for this week one edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. If you can't make it to Gateway on Friday night, you can listen to the game live on msasports.net, watch our live stream on the Woodland Hills Football Network Facebook page, select broadcasts throughout the season, will also be streamed live on our YouTube channel. And as always, you can tune into the replays on Monroeville Comcast Channel 13, Penn Hills Comcast Channel 98, and Verizon Fios Channel 37, as well as on our YouTube channel. For everybody at the Woodland Hills Football Network, I'm Adam Gusky, and we'll talk to you again next week. This has been a presentation of the Woodland Hills Football Network. Watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as always, visit us at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com.